Seekers. I'm here for another fantastic interview with Susan Devaney from the Moving Mavens, movingmavens.com. Welcome, Susan. Hi. Nice to see, be with you, Becca. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you here yeah. <laughs> on, online. So thank you so much for coming on the show today. I'm thrilled to be here. So it sounds like you just came back from a conference. Yes, um, part of the National Association, which is actually what really helped me launch my business. It's the National Association of Senior Move Managers. Who knew there was such a thing? It started um, actually back in early 2000. It's only been in existence 11, 12 years. Mm -hmm. I joined in 2007 when I started my business, and now I'm on the board. I'm very proud of that. Fantastic. Um, we, we're um, 700 companies nationwide, 50, almost 50 in Canada and in the UK, and it's a great way to build community among people do, who do this. It also, um, on their website, uh, nasm.org, there um, is a map of all the member companies so that if you're looking for someone in your area, you can click on there, go to your state or go to your loved one's state and find out what's on the other side. Also, anyone could get in touch with me, and I, because I've been going to the conference now every year for this was just my sixth one, we get to meet all the other m member owners across the country and exchange ideas and really get to know each other on a personal basis so that I can feel very comfortable referring you to different people, as well as the um, executive offices of the association. They know us all as well. Fantastic. So when you talk about this association, uh, tell us about... Your business, uh, the we'll start with the nutshell version of your business and why you're involved with this association. So tell us about Moving Mavens. Uh, Moving Mavens began because, um, well, I've, I've always had a passion and love um, of working with the senior community. I was inspired by my grandmothers. So, you know, it goes back to your grandmothers. And I have a great mom, and just the the legacy of strong women before me. Um, and I think that they were pioneers, and I just always loved their energy and was just drawn to them. And so as I went to college, I was studying political science and different things, but I was just drawn. And back then, there wasn't a degree in gerontology. But I focused my studies in that direction. And then I went to school in the D.C. area, University of Maryland, and I started out, um, I was a reporter covering the House and Senate committees on aging. Back then, how the options for people as they age was so different than what we have today. We have phenomenal opportunities today for living situations, for supportive care, mm -hmm. but it's a big maze and people don't know where to go. So we really, I describe it sometimes as like surrogate daughters and sisters mm -hmm. that um, we just, you know, we, we adopt you as a family and just help be your roadmap through whatever process of transition you're going through. We work some. We had started even more and more with people in their you know early 50s, but the bulk of our business are were referred by um, our peers to their parents. Most of the people were moving or over 80, but more and more people are starting to plan to leave that huge house before mm -hmm. they get there because it really gives them freedom to move on to another chapter in their lives and not have to be kind of burdened by the things that we all end up accumulating over the years. Yeah, absolutely. We can definitely be a burden to all those things from our travels and just, just life in general. They just tend to, to accumulate rather quickly. So so with Moving and Mavens... Trapped us in our house. Like you yeah. get people feel like, I can't go because I have too much stuff and what do I do with it? So we're, you know, we can either kind of give you the roadmap and guide you or we can come in and we're hands-on with a team of us or just one-on-one -on -one and really help propel you through that process. So give us a quick list of what your services are. If someone said, you know what, I've got to find a service to move my, my mother uh, in a month, what kind of services would you guys offer? Um, well, what we do, we start with a free consultation because um, I'm also a realtor and if someone were to say to you, okay, I have a three bedroom, split level house, two and a half baths, you know, until you see it, you don't know the size of the rooms, you don't know, like, location. You, you need to go and see. You need to meet the people and find out what their goals are, what their time frame is, um, how healthy the mom is, if she's going to really be participating or if the it will be more directed by the kids and just really get the details of what the family's working with. If their family member's coming into town or just what the picture is. And then we can put together... 
uh, a plan for that family. And it's it's a smorgasbord. It's like you know going into the uh, cafeteria. You get to pick and choose the services. Yep. We generally like to start with a floor plan. If you know about where you're going, even if you don't have the exact space, we know pretty much what will fit in most standard two, say, two bedroom apartments in an independent living or a 55 plus community. And people generally have an idea of where they want to go. And if they don't, we can help guide you to resources that can help you find where you might want to live next as you're downsizing. Okay. So we, you know, we go through from every closet covered kind of where your hot spots are that you need to attack, the things that make you the most anxious, and um, just break them down into bite-sized pieces and come in and work with you. We usually don't work longer than like a four-hour period of time because people get tired. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we can work. We can get direction from you and do it for you, or we can work hand in hand alongside families. And sometimes families will come in and make just a big, almost family reunion around it. Mm -hmm. um, and that at that point, we will have more people working, so we can just kind of support each person as they're they're doing whatever task they take on. But you get you're getting rid of things, so you divide it up among the families, arrange for shipping, or if you have things to sell or donate. We just expedite all that for you. We make lists for what's going to donations so you'll get your tax receipts. And then we book a mover. We have preferred uh, movers that we work with who really take great care of your belongings. And uh, Oh, that's really, that's really, really important. So you are saying that, that uh, if someone's looking for a, a service like you provide, What's a, a huge benefit is having someone like you that has the relationships with the person um, who's actually going to pick up that you know piece of crystal or that family heirloom and move it safely. So that's probably very important to have those relationships. That those relationships are key, especially also uh, with the moving and when you're you're looking to sell things that you don't have room for and the family's not going to keep. Most of us, what we have after the family takes what they want and we take what we want as the person who's moving. Mm -hmm. um, generally, if nobody in the family wants it, unless you have tons of really high-end things, mm -hmm. you've got a lot of donation and not a lot for sale. But it, like more of a household kind of auction, you can have some value in your things. And we want to make sure that whoever you're going to, we've already vetted that business for you. We make sure that it's no one who's going to be preying on the senior and seeing them as a vulnerable population that they can swoop in and kind of mm -hmm. steal things away. Uh, you know, we really want to, we protect our clients from unscrupulous, um, you know, vendors. Unfortunately, they're out there. So uh, we just don't want you to run into them. And actually, what ends up happening is because how we can streamline the process for you, it ends up, even though there is a fee to our services, it you end up saving money in the long run because nobody's okay. taking you. You get less done, more done in less amount of time. Um, yeah. And our preferred realtors will give you special deals because we do do so much business with them. Great. So you've, you have planning services, uh, home organization, you have the relationships with the, the movers that are going to come in, and then you also help with uh, home sales as well. You have relationships with realtors? Well, actually, I am a realtor. You're the realtor. Also, okay. I work better. with like, I also do staging. We're certified stagers, so Excellent. so much of your real estate, most of us are, we have a big part of our nest egg in our homes, and so if you're fortunate enough to own a home and you're ready to sell it, you know, most of us as we're going through life, you have times of deferred maintenance, you know, things that you really need to spiffy up before you put it on the market. Because when people are buying homes these days, they over 99% of people who buy a home see it first online. So they're seeing the photographs of your rooms. And there's certain tricks to that. Same as when you're designing a window display of a shop, your home is becoming that window display. So we want to make sure that you're showing the architecture and the features of your home to the best that you can in the 24 photographs you can put up online in the videos and the floor plans so we get you ready for your you know your glamour shot of your house that's and, uh, so we can market yeah. it really well yeah that's 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 a hard thing to do though imagine you probably have I, I sold my home about a year ago and one of the services was having a stager come in and I was I understood and I try to be as least resistant as possible because the goal was to turn it into a product and sell the yes. product and let go of the home, turn it into a house. But I would imagine that might be an area of resistance for some of your clients. Yeah. 
I was just having this conversation with the family this morning, mm -hmm. and they've lived in the house for almost 40 years. Right. You know, their kids grow up there. The grandchildren have been coming back. Um, and you've decorated in a style that you love. And I was saying to them, you know, you really, you want to try to take as much emotion out of it as you can and think of it as a commodity in the same way you would think of going to buy a car as a commodity. Someone is coming to buy your house, except this costs a lot more than a car. And you want to get the best return you can from it. So if you can try to think of your house as each room and vignette in your house is a shop window. And when the buyers are walking by and seeing what you have in your shop window, which is literally like a window into your home because they're looking at a photograph of it on the computer, you want that to draw as many buyers as you can, the same as the window display. So if you can take your personality out of it, yeah. then you're going to not limit your buying pool. And the more people you get interested, ideally you get multiple offers. And that still does happen day in and day out in this market. If you prepare your house right and you, you price it properly. And it's really, it doesn't have to cost a fortune to prepare your house. But if you haven't spent any money in taking care of your house or kind of doing upkeep, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've got to catch up a little bit. And, uh, but you, you get such a big bang for your buck when you invest in it. You really get a, re, a good solid return and how the market sure. is. So after, after the fact, when you have uh, convinced that client to, <laughs> to spend a little, you know, um, paint the bathtubs or <laughs> gloss it up a little bit. Are they really appreciative after once they see the end result and how the response is? It's so it's so classic that what happens is yeah, yeah. they're ready to go for the photographs and they say walk around and they say, geez, I think I want to stay here. This looks great. It hasn't looked this great in years. And they're they're just so excited. And what's really yeah. nice, they're just so proud. They're ready to present it to the world. But they also because you've taken out a lot of the family photographs, if there's been a lot of wallpaper, you kind of made it um, more appealing. You want your buyers, if they happen to have a print couch, that for it to go against your solid painted wall and not against your floral wallpaper. Um, mm -hmm. So when they walk through, they need to envision their things there for them to be willing to make an offer. So they really, as soon as you start painting one room, people get the hang of it. And you don't have to repaint your whole house. I'm not saying... You know, when you can pick and choose, you don't have to do everything. You know, again, you can, you can, the, the homeowner is in full control of what they choose to do. We make suggestions sure. and they get to choose. Yeah, but definitely, if I can make it a suggestion, <laughs> I watch all the HDTV shows, bathrooms and kitchens. That's what my <laughs> realtor said. If anything, yeah. do your bathroom and kitchen. And then we had to, having a pet was a little bit challenging. I I hid the dog bowls, the dog food bowls and all the anything dog related, I hid that. But it ended up making I sold my house within 2 weeks because I listened to an expert like yourself and I said, "Oh, that's going to be a little extra work." My video, there's my video. It'll be a little extra work, but it'll pay off because I want to yes. be done with this process as soon as possible. So listening to an expert can really change the outcome and the time. The time frame tremendously. And that's mm -hmm. the other thing is that when we've been working with the family for a while, they know we're working so hard on their behalf. And that when you get to the pricing, we're able to really show them the comps, show them the photographs of the other houses, the ones that have been on the market for a long time, and the ones that fly off the market. And you really see a very clear-cut picture as to the reason why. Either they are staged, and HGTV has been a phenomenal resource at educating the general public, or they um, or they priced a little bit reduced, so someone will think, oh, well, I can come in, it's priced well enough that I can come in and make my changes. The other part of pricing it well is that you want to be the house that the week you go on the market, all the realtors are saying to their buyers, oh my gosh, this house is priced really well. If you don't get in and make your offer right away, it's going to fly off the market. That's when you get multiple offers. And when you get multiple offers, people go to the top of what they can afford instead of trying to scoop your house away at the bottom of what they can afford. Um, so everybody's got a range when they start looking as a buyer and you want them reaching to the top of their range. Mm -hmm. So the money goes in your pocket. 
Absolutely. Speak, spoken like an expert, Susan. <laughs> so you have so much experience in this area and so, and so many categories because just home staging itself is, is an expertise in itself. So you took all of this and then chose to niche even a little bit further to seniors. So tell us more about you and why, why seniors? Why did you combine all of this and then focus on seniors? Well, I, from the very beginning, I was about seniors before it was ever even, I mean, well, there wasn't the study of gerontology when I started. So um, mm -hmm. it was just where I was drawn. And mm -hmm. I absolutely 100% know it was my grandmothers and I had, not to discount my grandfathers too, and I had um, a wide range of, of uh, great and great, great and great, great aunts who, you know, they were just very inspiring people. My family's large and um, I just had such respect for the wisdom and how they were. And my family was great at helping each generation above them transition. But I saw in the rest of the world where families weren't as supported or where kids were ready to help, but they really didn't know exactly what to do or who to trust, especially if you're coming in from out of town. Yeah. Even if you used to live there, you don't know the businesses that are there 20 years later and who to refer your parents to and what to do. Mm -hmm. So having, it's almost like having another extended family member in the town that can guide you and that you know that when you're there with your family and you have to go back home, even if you're somewhat local but you're back to your job and your work-a-day world and your immediate family, that there's somebody that you can count on who's going to be your parent's advocate as much as you want to be your parent's advocate. Absolutely. Yeah. I think there's big education mm -hmm. that we're the first generation, the, the boomers of having parents living such full lives for so long. Generations didn't used to be so active into their 80s and 90s like they are now. But people need support, and depending on their health, um, they're not able to do the things for themselves. So to help kind of educate all of society, family by family, on how to best be able to support their, their loved ones, I think um, there's a great need for education and, um, and changing the model of how we've done it or creating the model of how we've done it because there right. isn't an example. Right. I, I feel you said that we have become uh, an extended part of the family. In my computer training business, uh, it's, it seems something like so as if I'm just a geek squad person. But even in that business, because my focus was purely seniors and baby boomers, I became, especially for the families who were out of state, uh, an extended part. I had my ear to the ground, so to speak, and right. I wasn't, uh, I'm still part of those families. And so I think you bring up a great point is that adult children don't always know where to turn. I mean, just to move ourselves, right. right, to figure out who do we trust and we're going to put that grandfather clock in this person's hand, what's their record like as far as uh, reviews. So it, it sounds like you're a very important part of that family's process for, for some time. So maybe it's... Um, how long would you say you spend with the families? Is it a, a six-month period, a one-year period of starting this plan to move them into a new home? You know, it really varies tremendously. We had, I think the shortest, longest distance we had was we were contacted by a woman as she was about to get on a plane from Hawaii to come to New Jersey to move her mother out of the home that the kids, five kids had all grown up in, mm -hmm. um, and she, there had been a, a sudden change in the mom's health, and she mm -hmm. needed to be out, I was getting contact at the beginning of the week, she needed to be out by the end of the week, and so, oh yeah, exactly, gosh. so, no stress. that's really, and, and this poor daughter who was, you know, heart-wrenched over her mom's health, but then this huge task in front of her, so we went in to create the floor plan for where her mom was going. Her mom was going into assisted living. Um, and to what would fit that we could bring the things that were so important to her mom. And part of what we do, we just love digital photography because we can take photographs of exactly what the dresser top is like, the night tables, what they have on their end tables or their coffee tables, how they have the pictures hung on the wall above the favorite chair. And we duplicate that in the new home. So we really... Um, we love when we get to do the uh, reveal of the property because what we tend to do is we work with the family, whether it's the person who's moving or in this case it was the daughter, 
select the favorite things and what they know, and then um, we work with the movers. The family takes the parent out of the house, so when the packers are there, the process is bedlam. So we have that process happen because we now have exact directions to what to do. The packing gets done, we move them out, we have the boxes in the new place, and before the parent ever comes into the new space, we have everything unpacked, the pictures on the wall in relationship to where they used to go. Most people awesome. like that. Some people like to come in. So that when the parent walks in, even if they have, um, they're suffering from some levels of dementia or something like that, things are so familiar to them that it really feels like home. Um, and that is, they're not living with boxes even for a minute. Um, the boxes are gone and the things are in the closet, in the kitchen cabinets, you know, wherever the night tables, the bedsides are as they were actually what most people say is our my things never look so good because they're you know <laughs> they're as if you would have them if someone had come to clean for you and now they're all perfect <laughs> so it's it's a very um it's it's one of the reasons the people who work with us um say at the end of the day you know i i feel like this is um i get such joy and so much return back from our families. It's just such a pleasure. They love what they do. Um, and I think that that's communicated to our families. We, we love being with them and what we're able to do for them is so rewarding to us. Uh, it makes a difference in people's lives. Well, and it also sounds as if in a situation where someone might feel of any age, but particularly our seniors, they might feel they have a loss of control. For, oh, someone, for someone like your company to use technology, use a camera to take a picture of the layout of the dresser top, we all have our dresser tops a certain way, uh, to put that back in gives maybe that senior a sense of, of control in the situation, makes them feel a bit of comfort to have some things the same in such an unstable environment or, or during that time of change. It's such dramatic change for them and usually, well not usually, I, frequently it's not a change that if they had their first choice they wouldn't make. Most of us, especially if you've been in a house for a very long period of time, change is not something you're used to. And anything that you haven't practiced for a long time is going to be a huge step for you. So taking that huge step is already traumatic. If you can walk into something really familiar that gives you you, you know, we all, we have our, we have our rituals, we have our daily routines, and if you can keep the flow of their life through their space as close to what they had as possible, I think that consistency, especially in the face of all that dramatic change, is very reassuring. Um, and the things that they treasure the most, I mean, they just walk around the room almost touching things sometimes, they're just so thrilled to feel like, I feel at home, I can't believe I feel at home. And that's just a phenomenal, I mean, too many times everyone said just in joyous tears. I mean, it's just, oh, this really works. You know, wow. Yeah, it's those it's those little, little things. But it's so many, for what you guys do, it's so many little details. What, uh, you know, I had, a, details. I had a client and I gave him a, a special mouse for his computer and I gave him a large font keyboard and his response was, this is a miracle, and this is the biggest blessing because he could see it. So very similar to yeah. you, and it, you know, to everyone out here, it's like, oh, it's such a little thing. But something little to someone who has been in their home for 40 or 50 years, and all their children have gone off, they have families of their own, they're busy, they have careers, to have that sort of care come in and those details. I mean, I, don't, I was going to ask you, you know, what kind of impact, why someone should choose uh, a specialty company like yours over another moving company. I think, I, I think I want you to come and move me <laughs> when I move next. Actually, you know, it's funny you say that because it's not uncommon that we move someone's parents or their grandparents or their aunts and uncles, and then they say to us, "Oh, wow, come and if we've like done some decluttering and kind of downsizing of the closets and the things." Come and do me next. <laughs> I don't want to yes, wait to do yes. it. I want to do it now. <laughs> sign me up. Sign me up. The uh, other thing that's really great, when you were saying about hiring someone who's an expert, um, and actually at the conference, um, I went with a few of my team members this year. It was very exciting for me. It's the first time I went with team members um, who were the mavens on my on my staff. And 
Um, one of the women who went with me is um, does our websites. Actually, we're about to launch a new one. Uh, our websites and our social media and all of that. And she made we made a presentation together. All of her expertise because I don't have that. And that was one of the things I was saying to the other business owners is that you know we each have our area of expertise and we hire attorneys and we hire financial planners or accountants. Uh, we hire a mover because they know what they're doing. The senior move manager is really an area of expertise that they have the related services they can refer you to. They, you know, we do this every day. So we have the roadmaps. We know how to streamline it the best. We know many of the trigger points that cause people anxiety so we can point those out or steer you around them. The other thing is with the kids or the family members is that there's no one who knows your parents are going to be more comfortable with than the family. And so what tends to happen is the family comes into town, and I know I've done this with my own parents and who are about to move, and um, you have a checklist list of things that you need to get done for them, the logistics, but you blow into town for two or three days, or maybe you get to stay for five or a week, and you're motoring through that list, and meanwhile, your parents feel like they've been in the middle of a revolving door that's spinning around out of control by the time you leave, yes, and you've hardly yes. sat down and had a conversation with them, and what they really need at that time of tumultuousness is you. So if you can come into town and get a senior move manager in place and establish that relationship with your parents and with them, or even if you can't, we can do it in Skype with the extended family members, or while we're with extended fa the parent, we'll call and have, have a conference call or even just a call with the, the um, child who's kind of the planner for this part of the process so they can everybody can feel supported. Yes. That way, your time is spent doing the things that only you can do. The She's other part of it is, is that if they really, your parents really don't want to go, but it's really time for safety or health reasons that they need to, mm -hmm. We can kind of be the bad guys and you don't have to be because you're their kid. You need to be able to Great keep point. going and we're the ones who are bringing in this list of like, okay, these are the things we need to do to safely get you out or to um, to help you plan the next details and, and it can defer some of that energy off and usually people are, if the kid is saying it, then you know that's an established communication line there's gonna there could be more friction but if someone who is the expert from outside of the family yes, says it yes it helps streamline and smooth that delivery of the message it yes. can also if there's um we all have communication patterns in our families among siblings and so when you have an outside professional there <laughs> everyone tends to be on their best behavior and yes. we can also make sure that we're able to really respect whatever each family member brings to the table um, because everyone's doing the best they can right. and so to really right. help honor everyone's contribution um, actually one of the, the things that uh, is the most special to us is a few families have said to us that we helped mend communication patterns that had been in their family going through the process of moving the parents. Okay, you know what? I think I need Susan's help and I need the moving mavens. What do I do? I encourage families um, to, as they're thinking about it and getting started, don't be afraid to make that initial contact because, yes, we can help people in a week, but that's a really tight time crunch. You don't want to give yourself or your family members an ulcer. You know, you, you mm -hmm. want, if you can, as you see it coming down, sometimes things change. There's a death, there's a change in health, and things just have to move quickly, and we understand that. But if you can plan even two months out, but six months out is not too early to contact us because we can give you tips and your family tips for little things you can start doing that will help empower your parents or empower the people who are going, who are involved in your family most closely. We come in and what's really nice for a family is we can meet you earlier in the process so we can then end up going back, you know, one morning or afternoon a week, depending on what's the better time frame in a senior's life. Some people are very much morning people. Other people don't really get cranky until after 11 o'clock in the morning. So we work with, you know, Me. depending. <laughs> we work with whatever your personal clock is so that it's the best time of day for you when you're feeling most energized. Awesome. And we can meet and establish yeah. that rapport and the sense of trust because we're in people's homes and there is... 
you know, it's personal and we want them to feel comfortable with us and I have to say we're pretty successful that happens in the first meeting. And frequently if you can just have a little bit, even a five minute phone conversation before the meeting, which we love to be able to do, then people feel like they're not saying hello for the first time when we're standing at their front door. Mm -hmm. um, that sense of security and calm and knowing that I have a road map and that they're gonna they're not gonna abandon me in the middle of this process. We're gonna get through this together. Good point. I think is a really good thing because people generally know it's coming. And so the sooner you can cut the anxiety about it and have people feel in control of the process, the better. So it sounds like even though you could help somebody, you would absolutely help somebody if they were crunched for time, the, right. best, the best thing to do is to plan. The more time you spend planning, the better the experience is for everyone and the easier it is. So plan, yeah. plan, plan. Okay. The, the thing is too, if you're... Your loved ones are in a huge house. You don't have to review everything in the house before you move them. You, you make a floor plan for what they're going to take and you focus on the things that they've been using in the last five years, not things they haven't looked at for 25 years. And depending on the parent's health, it's not even kind to ask them to go through things that are really old because chances are it's not anything you want to keep. And if it's a situation where you need to sell the house or get out from under a rent or something sooner, um, for a short term period of time, you could put things in the storage. We never recommend storage because it becomes the black hole that you know mm -hmm. you put it in and you never <laughs> go back to address it and it just costs you money. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another reason that uh, but we can streamline that sorting process and really guide you into the, um, the most fluid way for everybody to move it forward. Yeah, I mean, I saw recently, uh, I can only relate it, if anyone here has seen, uh, what is it called, Moving or M Moving Spelling Mansion, Candy Spelling and Aaron Spelling. You know, oh, they had I have not seen it, but I've heard. I, it was on HGTV a couple weeks ago. Oh, it's called Selling Spelling Mansion. Candy Spelling has, I think, is it the largest home in the United States? I don't know. I, I believe so. Out in uh, Bel Air, Beverly Hills, had thirty days to move oh, her home, oh. and so she did. She had to plan very quickly, but every step of the process was planned. And she did. She had so much stuff. Some had to go to auction. Some went to storage. Oh. But she needed somebody like yourself who had an overall plan, who could bring in the different moving parts to make this happen. 30 days. It was, it was wild. And it was also, it's also emotional. It's a, uh, it's a home. Very it was a place where she, you know, her, she raised her children. Uh, Aaron Spelling was creating Beverly Hills 90210 dynasty. So there's a lot of emotion to it on top of the, one of the most stressful experiences of a person's life. So having an expert, it, I feel like it just, it's worth every single penny to have an outside source there to walk you through and hold your hand. The other thing people tend to do is there's definite order of processes that will streamline mm -hmm. it for you and also mm -hmm. save you money. So if you do certain things in different orders, then you have um, different services backtracking. You need them to come back in. You're paying them twice. It's always, it's always more economical for you if you can consolidate the services that you need. Um, also a certain time to bring the mover in, you bring the mover in too soon, you really don't know what you're taking. You can't get a, a realistic quote from a mover because mm -hmm. they don't, it's like going to a shop and saying how much do I owe you before you picked out the merchandise. Like They don't know how much you owe them, you haven't selected your merchandise yet. <laughs> it's the same right. idea with the mover giving you a quote. If they don't know what they're moving or packing, they, they, they don't have enough information. And That tends to happen where everyone just thinks, oh I have to get this all in place, but you know, it's that roadmap. It's again that roadmap. And as in anything in your life, if you have the opportunity to plan or you have someone who's accustomed to doing it, it's like a financial plan. You know, you pick, you select people who this is what they do all day long, this is what they know how to guide you and how to tell you what your best options are and allow you to pick and choose what you want. Very good. So let's do this. Let's go through your services real quick. I want to go through the uh, ABCs. And okay. uh, tell me if I'm forgetting something. So, movingmavens.com is the website, correct? Yes. And your services. Yeah, that, that's M O V I N G 
M A V I N S. And maybe it's commonly spelled with an E. This is with an I. Okay, perfect. And so your services are planning services, aging in place and home organization, moving services, housing, home sales, moving services, and of course you uh, give referrals as well to other experts in fields, correct? Correct. And we also in the before. Generally, the scope of things is the planning and getting you downsized so that you know what you're moving, the floor plans, but then also the staging in there before you sell. Because that step, even if it's very minimal, like you had mentioned before, kitchens and baths, I'm not suggesting that people redo kitchens or redo bathrooms, mm -hmm. but a coat of paint and some mm -hmm. uh, streamlining of things and some... Um, Hiding just all of the bathroom. <laughs> fit and polish, changing yeah. grass. You know, those things just make all the difference in the world. Um, I always say, like, when you walk into a hotel room, if it's not spit and polished, you really don't want to put your toothbrush down. You want the buyer to feel the same way. So that's middle Excellent. stage of staging is uh, really key. Home staging, yes. Yeah. It, extremely key. And take all those bathroom toiletries. Put them in a basket and hide toothpaste okay. With the toothpaste, uh, I mean, just hide it. Just... I mean, I remember when <laughs> we would get the call from a realtor that someone was coming over, and I had the perfect towels, embroidered towels underneath. I'd exchange the towels, put up the nice ones that haven't been touched, take everything, and just push it down. But I tell you, we took the effort. We sold our house in two weeks, but we did everything we were told by an expert like yourself. <laughs> you know, I have a quick little tip on that is sure. what, when you're doing that quick get ready to show mm -hmm. that if you take a basket with a lid on it that's a decorative, attractive thing that you have in each room. Mm -hmm. So as you're doing the swoop of things off the tabletops <laughs> or something, yes. if it's really a quick turn, you know that whatever you swooped is still in the same room where it used to be. Because if you're running, you can spend hours looking for it later, which is far <laughs> too frustrating. You don't want to go there. So that, a basket for each room, and then you can move yeah. it with you, and it's decorative and useful, even if you use it to store things in a closet. Sure. That's an awesome tip. So let us let me see if I can get one more good tip. So for all of our listeners here, you, you've actually given us so many awesome tips and insight to this process, but what's one action a listener can take today if they are going to be moving or their parent or grandparent and or uncle are moving in the next few weeks, what's one piece of advice you would give somebody? I would say start in a room that is the most non-threatening to you. Like if you're a real kitchen person, don't start in your kitchen because you won't know what to do. Or if clothes are your mm -hmm. thing, don't start in your own closet. Or um, office and your papers are what cause you like the most anxiety, start somewhere else. But start with one drawer in one room and clear it out and just organize it get rid of the things you don't need and give yourself assign yourself 10 minutes in a day and 10 minutes a day is your goal or even every other day that you're gonna do just one little project and what will tend to happen is you'll feel so great about the results mm -hmm. you'll think oh I can do two drawers right now and you end up doing 20 minutes and you'll be just amazed at how quickly just little by little even a room that's piled high just one pile of papers just one little bit it really starts making an impact but it gives you confidence it gives you adrenaline to get going the other thing I would suggest to the boomer kids and actually this just came up today when one of the marketing managers of the community had said to me you know I think it's not such a big deal I was changing over my TV I went to this cabinet where I had all the audio stuff and the mm -hmm. you know videos and I started to clean it out and it took me all day this project I thought was going to be so quick and I got to the end of the day and ended up shoveling some of it back in it was such a huge job I think if you do that in your own home in one space it will allow you to appreciate a little more what your parent is going through because we all think, oh, just clean it out. It's so much easier to clean out someone else's things than it is our own. Sure. So just to give yourself a little more empathy toward your parent, and then you'll also end up with a cleaner space yourself. <laughs> you get a bonus on the side. There you go. There you go. And, and maybe you could sell some stuff off. Absolutely. And, and oh, there's some declutter. great websites that are coming up for that that were just recently in the news. Um, I'll put some of those up online, have Lucy post those that you can really get money. But when you're trying to downsize, especially if you only have a month or two and you have decades of things, mm -hmm. um, you need to have time to do that. 
And that, again, is probably not an area of expertise. So it takes a lot of time to post those things to sell them yourself. And if you have loads of time, have at it. But if you don't, if you don't right. add that to your anxiety to-do list. Right. Well, that's a great tip. I believe a, a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Absolutely. So, <laughs> excellent advice. Susan, I hate to end this here. Because you are full of wisdom nuggets that we can all take with us. And I think anyone who's watching this now wants you to come over to their house and help them get organized and help them with their next move all over the, all over the world. So I appreciate your time. And you guys, like I said, all of the links to connect with Susan and her company, movingmavens.com, will be down below along with our conversation. So please subscribe to this show up above and tell us what you think. Tell us your experience with moving your parent. Tell us your experience with staging your home. We want to know what challenges you're having. I'll be listening. Susan will be listening. And uh, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much. Actually, when you're saying tell us your experience, we're going to start having guest bloggers on our site. So if you have a story that you'd like to share, get in touch. Oh, We'd love to share it. And you, I'm sure... If more people share their stories, fewer people would have so much anxiety. I think it would be a great way of just connecting people in the same boat. I agree. Okay, awesome. So, guest Thank blogging you. over at Susan's site. Uh, so much good information. Thank you so much, and we'll talk soon. Great. All right, bye, bye everyone.